The uh, battle for Kiev is on and Russian forces are pushing toward the capital, uh, the Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And according to U.S. intelligence estimates, it's not going to take them long to get it. They have deployed a ferocious uh, force, 150,000 troops. They've got superior weaponry. And so you see all these uh, grim pictures of the uh, Ukrainians in bomb shelters and kind of hunkering down. But um, according to uh, re news reports and apparently according to intelligence estimates, it's only going to be three to four days before the Russians are in Kiev and Putin is having, you know, breakfast in, in Kiev. Now, what to me is really disturbing, and this is really shows the shift in our culture, is the way in which uh, various figures in the media, in entertainment, even in politics, are talking about this in a manner that suggests a complete lack of seriousness about foreign policy, a lack of understanding, a lack of comprehension, and a kind of jejun, inane projection of local uh, concerns that have to do with political correctness and other kinds of nonsense onto um, Putin and onto Russia and onto a global stage that doesn't really see things this way. I'll talk about power politics in a moment, but let me just read a few things that I've been seeing and hearing. Here's Joy Behar. She's a little upset about what's happening in Ukraine. She says, this could kind of shake up the map of Europe and Italy. She goes, I I've been planning a vacation to Italy. This, this, could, this, could, this could interfere with that. Uh, this is Joy Behar. Apparently, it all comes down to Joy Behar's vacation. Uh, then we have a guy... Um, uh, also on social media, um, an academic of some sort, and he goes, well, you know, Putin, uh, yeah, where does he get the arrogance to do this kind of thing? It's probably because of white supremacy. Putin's white. Could he really do this if he were black or if he were brown? And I'm thinking to myself, how out of it is this type of analysis? I mean, this is it's one thing to, you know, talk like this at like, Oberlin or Bowdoin College, but to put this out when we're discussing a, in, in a, a serious international event, I mean, people are even talking, addressing Putin directly. I've seen some videos to this effect, and they're talking to Putin like he's some woke graduate of like Yale, and that he, you know, cares about how you feel or how, um, you know, the Ukrainians feel or how the world, I keep hearing the world will not forgive you, the world, uh, as if Putin is sitting around, like, yeah, what is, what is the world think about what I'm doing. This does not enter into his brain at all. Here is uh, John Kerry, our climate czar, from really just a few days ago. Listen to this. He goes, now northern Russia is thawing and his infrastructure, Putin's infrastructure, is at risk and the people of Russia are at risk. So I hope President Putin will help us to stay on track with respect to what we need to do on the climate. On the climate. Uh, and here's the New York Times um, talking about the fighting in Ukraine. And what gets me is the second sentence. The first one is kind of normal. The fighting in Ukraine's east is forcing a mass migration to the west uh, that is crowding mass transit centers and trains and jamming roads. But then comes this little rhetorical uh, classic, this gem, quote, Video images of the large number of Ukrainians on the move show few signs of face coverings. <laughs> <laughs> Even as the country is just getting past a record high point in its infection rate. So the Times is a little worried that, you know, not only are the, are the mask requirements being ignored, but what about social distancing, guys? You're all in a bomb shelter. You're abnormally close to each other. And I think to myself, you know, it actually makes me uncomfortable to read this kind of nonsense because it is just so detached from reality. It is, it's the mark of a certain kind of ideological uh, derangement. Now, the left has been, uh, uh, trying to portray conservatives as somehow pro-Putin. You know, these guys are for Putin. No, we're not for Putin. None of us are for Putin. We want the Ukrainians to hold out. We want the Ukrainians to win. Uh, we're not for Putin. Putin's a thug. But here's my point. I have a certain kind of grudging respect for Putin for the simple reason that he's a thug that understands his country's interests and he's a thug that understands the use of power. I'd say exactly the same thing, by the way, of China Xi. These are thugs, but they're thugs who pay careful attention to how do you get things accomplished. Uh, we can't really say the same thing about Biden. The problem here uh, with the Ukraine is a bigger and deeper one, and that is that the United States has 
played very poorly uh, the game of power politics. It's almost as if we egged on the Ukraine. Oh yeah, the United States is the world's sole superpower. No worries, Ukraine. Why don't you guys come into NATO and, you know, oh, together we will, we will, um, Putin's days are numbered anyway. Russia is going down, down, down. So you can be part of the winning team. Now, the problem with all this is igno ignores a simple fact. Ukraine is a very tiny dot right next to a big Russian bear. And Russia is going to try to make sure that the dots around it are subordinate to Russia. And so the question is, has the United States lulled Ukraine into a kind of illusion? Join our side, we'll be there for you, when the US and even Western Europe had no intention of directly coming to the rescue of Ukraine, as we are not now doing. I saw a ridiculous um, posting that says that the US is now hoping to help to train um, Ukrainian forces, quote, remotely. What, training Ukrainian forces by Zoom call? Hey guys, listen, let me give you, let us give you seven helpful tips as you take on the Russians. So this is unseriousness that seems to be permeating our society. No wonder, here we are, the world's sole superpower, at least we have been until now. This is not a conflict I think we're likely to win. Biden even knows that. He's basically saying, we, we don't really, we're not going to be using missiles. We're going to be using sanctions. But you know what? Sanctions can just be as terrifying as missiles. And I don't think there's anyone, not even Biden himself at the end of the day, who believes it.